Grace and peace be with you. And uh, we welcome you here on Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday is the Sunday that we recognize the, the beginning of the church. Or the Holy Spirit uh, descended upon the disciples and descends upon us. I have a couple of announcements. First of all, um, Marvin Ort passed away, and his visitation is today at Zion Lutheran from 4.30 to 7 p.m. So that is, the visitation is at the Zion um, ELCA today uh, from 4.30 to 7. And the funeral, his funeral will be at Zion Lutheran um, on Monday, tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. And also we got an email from Ariel um, uh, Delight Ebers' uh, daughter and Delight is going to be turning 70 on May 23rd, and she's doing a card shower for her to celebrate this milestone. Um, and so, a card shower, and I have Delight's um, address, which is 606 Russell Avenue, West Union, Iowa, and the zip code is 52175, but I'll put that on the bulletin board. Um, Kendall, could you move towards that bulletin board that you see right in front of you? The bulletin board. You see that? Okay, I'm going to give you this. If you could come up and put it on the bulletin board so it doesn't get lost in my papers and not get on the bulletin board before. So you can, so if you put it on that bulletin board and you can all watch where Kendall's going, so you can get um, Delight's address so you can send her a birthday card. I noticed Becky is sitting up here and probably wants to make an announcement. It was on, but somebody must have turned it off. Okay, now can you hear me? All right. Good morning, Becky Lassen from the Mission Committee, Mission Chair. Um, I have a couple announcements. First of all, if you haven't been in the Fellowship Center, check out the Mission, Sunday Mission Market is open now, and there's some goodies back there, along with some asparagus and rhubarb as well. Second of all, Mission Committee members, we will have a meeting today at 11 a.m., so I will see you all there. And the last announcement I have, we will start our in-gathering tree starting this Sunday. We will be collecting kits right now for help kits. So I will send around the baskets. Feel free to take one, two, however many tags you would like to. Return those items to the church. Put them on the tables by the in-gathering tree and hang your tag on the tree. Thank you very much. And this morning, we're going to be honoring our four high school graduates and also our college graduates that we know of. And so during the worship service, I'm going to be, your names are going to be up on the screen. And as I call your name, I'm going to invite you to come up front. Um, and you're going to, we're going to have a blessing for you and you're going to receive a gift. And after worship, I invite everyone to the fellowship center to greet all the graduates for reception. We will have um, companions in Christ will be meeting, um, but first, before we meet upstairs in room five, we will greet the, the graduates and uh, pick up some of the delicious snacks that the Christian Education Committee has made for us today. Um, Next week is our um, final Sunday school class for, for the year for the, for the children and youth. Uh, Companions in Christ will continue on until we finish uh, the way of forgiveness. But it's a big celebration, and all are invited to participate immediately after worship next Sunday. Are there any other announcements this morning? We are a people gathered together by a sign. That sign is the water of our baptism. It is a sign that we are God's reconciled and forgiven people. Let us worship God. It was a sad time. 
The disciples had gathered in Jerusalem for the Pentecost festival, but they wondered, what was the point? Jesus had died. Jesus had risen. Jesus had left them again. They were alone, confused, unsure of what to do or where to go next. Suddenly, the room was filled with a great indescribable sound. Some said it was like the wind. Some said it was like a great fire. All of them knew that it was God's spirit. They were not alone. The spirit of their creator God, the spirit of the risen Christ, was with them and would be with them forever. So come, Come, let let us us worship God. God. Please stand as you are able and welcome the spirit by singing Surely the Presence. Please remain standing as you are able and join with me in praying our opening prayer. The words are on the video screen and in your bulletin. God of wind and fire, we experience you in endless palette, a life-giving rainbow of hope and joy. When we, like the first disciples, look at life around us and wonder where is hope, Remind us of your presence and infuse us with your spirit that it might dance forever in our souls. Amen. Please join me in singing a hymn written by Charles Wesley, Love Divine, All Love Excelling. The words are on the video screen and on page 384 in the red hymnal.
You may be seated. Our New Testament reading today comes from the Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, uh, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Figra and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. <laughs> but Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of love for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And with the children, please join me up front. We're going to hear a story, The Day When God Made Church. Where are those other two little rascals? Those two other little energetic ones, they're upstairs? Oh, come down, come down, Maddie, come down. I've got a good story for you. Oh, look at this. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. Come down. All right. The day when God made the church. Look at it. First of all, it's got the best pictures. It's got the best pictures in it. Look at that. It's okay. Where does it start? All right. Looks like there's a cat. Oh, there's a cat in the story. We all gather and wait. Jesus is gone and we are nervous. I think that's what um, Tom read us this morning. They were sad. Everyone is curious to meet the one that Jesus would send us. The room is dark. Men and women, old people, young people, and animals wait. Wait for something to happen. Suddenly the animals move with excitement. What's that noise? And it grows louder. It feels like wind and it pounds like drum beats. It fills the room loud and full. Then the room grows brighter. Something hot 
and blazing shines in us. Darkness is gone. Fire fills the cold space. And now we feel warm inside our bodies. Smiles paint our faces. We all know something new is happening. We feel our hearts change inside. Wow. Is this what Jesus promised? A new sound comes. Words, words, like raindrops fall across the room. Oh, like raindrops. And look at the words, love and spirit, joy. Some with loud sounds, some with quiet whispers. Words like drum beats, words that tiptoe through the air. People crowd around and they hear the words. They recognize the languages. Something new is happening. The Holy Spirit has arrived. And everyone around me begins to ask questions. Who is this Holy Spirit? What is happening? Oh, I like this dog. <laughs> That's cute. Why do we feel so different? And Peter stands and he walks around looking at each of us. I wonder, is he going to speak? And then Peter opens his mouth and he starts to preach. It's his powerful voice fills the spaces around us and between us. Friends, something new is happening. Jesus has given us a wonderful gift. Don't be surprised if you all start to preach and dream too. Young and old, men and women, we are all called to something new. So everyone, everyone is. Young and old, boys and girls, God is changing so we can see old things in a new way. We all listen as Peter tells us the story of, of God's love in Jesus. It reminds us all what God taught us, and we hear again how Jesus loves us. Wow. And we remember when Jesus healed our friends and told us stories and shared good news. We listen as Peter describes the day, that horrible day, when Jesus hung on the cross. And we remember how sad we were. Is it? The dark clouds covered the sky, the earth shook, and Jesus died to save us. But our sadness did not last forever. And Peter reminded us that soon there was joy, laughter, and dancing. And Jesus came back to us. God raised him from the dead and gave us new life. And we all hear the word Peter preaches and the Holy Spirit changes us too. And the rivers of baptism pour out and we feel God's love. A love for us, for our families, for our friends, and even people who are far, far away. People everywhere all hear this good news. And we all begin this new life together. I think the person that drew this really likes cats. We become a new family. We share our things, we break bread together, and we worship God. That is what we call this day, Pentecost, the day when church was born. Men and women, boys and girls, people from everywhere were all filled with the Holy Spirit as they worship Jesus, alive and risen. Alleluia, alleluia. I wish you all could have seen all the beautiful pictures in here. The illustrations are just really very pretty. And they do not leave out some of our favorite friends, which happen to be cats and dogs. Right? <laughs> right on. All right. So what would, what would you like to pray about today? Anything in particular? Anything? Well, I think we've got some new graduates, people that have uh, graduated from high school and college, and you know they're on, on to new things too. So let us pray. Repeat after me. Loving God, thank you so much for sending us the Holy Spirit that helps us see new things and love one another in new ways. In Jesus' name.
we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thanks. Would you like to take this book back with you so you can look at it some more and then you can give it back to me later? Yep. Well, there's a lot happening in worship today and in our lives today. We are celebrating and honoring um, the graduates today and also... It is Pentecost Sunday. It's the birth of the church. It's the day when we celebrate that um, at one time, people were actually able to understand one another, actually able to understand. And that is always our hope, is that if we stop and listen deeply, we will experience some sense of truth about that other person, even if we don't agree with them. We can at least appreciate them. And the, and the sermon series um, today um, sounds like the title of it, as you can see up there, is Earn, Save, Give, which sounds like a really good advice for new graduates, right? What are you going to do? Well, isn't that the first question I heard? Everyone? So what are you going to do after you graduate? Where are you going to college? And for those that are graduating from college, what are you doing to earn a living? So earn all you can, save all you can, and give all you can sounds like pretty good, solid advice from John Wesley for our new graduates. But those for those of us uh, that weren't here last week, um, this series is actually based on uh, John Wesley's sermon, and it's this, his simple rules, and that's what they're supposed to be. It is not complicated. So it's to be simple, simple rules for money from his sermon, The Use of Money. So let's start with a story. There was a new pastor in a community. And one of the first things he did was join the Rotary Club because Lions Club hadn't come advancing towards him yet. So he joined Rotary because he wanted to get out and, and meet um, some of the business people of the community. And so he was new to the community and wanted to get to know people. And he knew a couple of the people from the church. And it was a nice meeting. It was a nice lunch. And as he sat down, there was a very successful business person in the community that was the keynote speaker that day for the Rotary Club meeting. And he stood up and he said, I am very Wesleyan. I believe in John Wesley and all. 